Ashley here with Coffee and Bible Time. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I am going to be showing you how I highlight and annotate my Bible. I decided to make this video because I was getting a lot of requests for it. So thank you for requesting it and I'm excited to show you guys how I highlight and annotate in my Bible. Now I want to say something very quick. From all the pictures you might be seeing on Instagram from my channel or from my page or from other people's pages on these really cute Bibles, don't think your Bible has to look like that. Um, what your Bible looks like is not what it's about. It's about spending time with Jesus and meeting God here in his word. And so what your Bible looks like should not be the goal, but it, it can be something fun that you do as you study your Bible. And so I love, I'm a very creative person, so I love doing art, calligraphy, hand lettering, um, pictures as I study my Bible. But if you are not that way, if that's not how you grow closer to the Lord, then that's okay. And your Bible doesn't have to look immaculate. It's about spending time with Jesus. You guys, I am just so thankful for each and every one of you who watches Coffee and Bible Time. You guys have a very special place in my heart, and I've been praying for each and every one of you, and I'm just so thankful for you. Also, don't forget about the CBT Bible reading challenge. We are currently reading through the entire Old Testament. So if you want to join that challenge, I will leave the video link down below if you want to read through the Old Testament with us. It is not too late. You can start now. If you are behind, keep going. Do not let the enemy um, stop you from reading through the word. Keep going. And for those of you who are doing the challenge with me, comment down below. Let me know how it's going. I have been absolutely loving it lately. Reading through the Old Testament has been phenomenal. So if you want to do it, if you want to get back on the wagon and keep doing it, keep doing it. It's linked down below. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe. Don't forget to if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified as well. We have been growing a ton lately, so I wanted to say thank you and thank you, Jesus. So you guys, I actually have this free printable that I will leave la le Can I talk today? I don't think I can. I have this free printable that I will leave linked down below, so just go click on that, it's on my website. So this is how I highlight as I go through my Bible. All the time I will highlight in purple who God is, his names, his attributes, his characteristics, and his actions. And you guys, this is what we're doing through the CBT Bible Reading Challenge. Um, is highlighting who God is. Um, important thing to remember as you read through your Bible, this is a story about who God is and his redemption story for us in the world. So as you're reading the Bible, don't jump automatically to yourself. So like, oh, what does this mean for me right now? No, you want to start off with who is God in this passage? How can I look more like God? How can I praise God for who he is? And so that is why in purple, in my Bible, in every book of the Bible, I will highlight who is God. The next thing I highlight in my Bible is green. What should I take away from the passage, commands, actions, and steps? So I will usually do this as I read through my Bible. If God gives a command or if um, a character in the Bible is doing something that is very godly, I will highlight it in green. Or maybe something is convicting me and really standing out to me, I will highlight that in green. and. I will do that because that will trigger my brain and tell me, okay, green, I need to live this out. Because we don't just read the Bible to read it and then move on from our day. We read it to let it transform and change our lives. Can I get an amen? Amen? Right? Don't touch your hair, Ashley. Yeah, yellow is when I, I highlight in yellow the prayers in the Bible. So anytime I've been seeing prayer, as I started reading through the Old Testament again, I have been highlighting prayers, um, Abraham's prayers, Moses' prayers, Jacob's prayers, any prayers. Um, 
And I'm going to do this throughout the whole Bible as I read it because I really want a better theology on prayer. I want to know what does the Bible say about prayer. And so you can do this with anything. Like if you want to do this with fear of the Lord, you can read the whole Bible through just focusing on fear of the Lord or just focusing on a certain thing and highlighting that in a certain color. The next color is orange. And this is when I will highlight the main idea or repetition of phrases and words. I really like doing this, you guys, because once when I when I read through a passage and I see the same word over and over and over again, or the same phrase over and over and over again, I will make sure I highlight that in orange or in whatever color, because if it keeps repeating, we know that's important. We know that that's hello we know that that is a big theme in God's Word so just highlight it and let it soak in and then the last color I have on here is blue which is God's promises and um, this is huge because God is a God who makes promises to his people he makes a covenant with us he wants a relationship with us and his promises are amazing one huge promise he gives in the Bible is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We need that truth to sink in today because we forget it all the time. And so that is a huge one. Now let's get into annotating. I'm going to give you guys a few ideas here for annotating in your Bible. Um, a good one to annotate as you read through is prayers. Prayers are huge and sometimes God just puts it on my heart to say a prayer. And so I'll just write it out in my Bible. Another one is quotes from books or sermons. So as I read books or as I listen to great sermons, I will annotate that in my Bible next to the passage. Another one is summaries. So let's say I'm reading through the Old Testament and I read three chapters and I want to write a summary so I can remember it next time. The next one is I rewrite what stood out to me in the passage. I do this a lot a lot. If a word stands out to me I love, if a phrase stands out to me I love, if an attribute of God stands out to me I love, I will just write it in huge massive letters like obnoxiously large um, and that just helps me remember and when I look back I can see it. Um, the next thing I do is bullet point lists of God's attributes. So sometimes it will just be like God is loving, God is kind, God is merciful, God is almighty, God is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, tells me so much about God. I'm going to make a massive list right here and just focus on it and meditate on it. Um, the next thing I have is questions. You guys, you can ask questions as you read through the Bible. In fact, I'd encourage you to ask questions as you read through the Bible. I have so many questions as I read through the Bible. Things that I wonder why or why did this happen or why did why did God do this or all these different things. And it's good to wonder. It's good to ask questions. And so I'll usually write that down in my Bible. And then hoping, it doesn't always happen, but hoping that I can ask someone older and wiser than me to answer the question. Um, the next thing I do is I label sections. So if I notice that there are certain sections, I will label them because I'm such a teacher at heart. Um, the next thing I do is I define words. And this is huge because there's a lot of um, Bible-y type terms that we may think we know, but we don't know. For example, um, redemption, grace, mercy, um, forgiveness. What's one that I read today? It was like something like restitution, make restitution. So I looked that up and I defined it. Another one, consecrated. I looked that up today and I um, wrote down the definition because it's good to know these words that are in the Bible for a very specific reason. And then the last thing I do in my Bible is I will do calligraphy or hand lettering or maybe some cute flower designs. And if you guys aren't into the, this type of thing, you don't have to do this in your Bible, but I like doing it because I am very creative Creative, and it helps me to just express what I've been reading and kind of write it out and praise it back out to God through handwriting, which sounds kind of crazy, but it's fun. And it really helps the truth to sink into my heart. And I've recently been using a, a book from Dayspring called Happy Hand Lettering. It's been giving me a ton of great ideas for my Bible and for hand lettering. I'll have that link down below if you want to check it out. I'll also have my Bible link down below if you guys want to see um, what Bible I use. I love the large sides. And I will also have my favorite Bible pens, highlighter things I use. And I will link those down below as well. 
Yeah, so that is what I have for you guys today. I hope this encourages you to dive deeper into your Bible and to, you know, pull out your highlighters, make it colorful, mark it up, and do all that fun stuff. Don't forget about the printable that I have. Created this one for you guys. It's free. It's linked down below. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you guys are continuing to do the Bible reading challenge. I love you guys, and I hope you have a great day.